video lesson I'm going to explain why the supply curve slopes upwards. In a previous lesson we introduced the concept of supply, the law of supply, and the determinants of supply. It was explained that there is a direct relationship between a goods price and the quantity that firms are willing and able to provide to the market in a particular period of time. This is known as the law of supply. What was not explained in that video however was the rationale behind the law of supply. There may be some common sense here. At higher prices, firms can simply earn greater profits. And since firms are profit seekers, it makes sense that at higher prices, firms will want to increase their production of a good. But common sense is not a good enough explanation for economists. We must have a scientific explanation for everything we teach. For this reason, I will be introducing and reviewing for some of you the law of increasing opportunity costs in this video. And we will explain how the law of increasing opportunity costs actually explains the law of supply. In our introductory unit in this class, we discussed what we called the law of increasing opportunity costs. This helps explain why a production possibilities curve might be bowed outwards from the origin. The law of increasing opportunity costs says that as the output of a particular good increases, the resources needed to produce that good become scarcer, causing the costs of producing additional units to rise. To explain how the law of increasing opportunity costs relates to the law of supply, we're going to use a simple example today. Let's assume that we're looking at the market for leather shoes. Leather shoes require raw materials, they require labor, and they require capital to produce. The raw material, obviously, is leather. The labor and capital refer to the workers needed to assemble the shoes in the factory and the machines that those workers operate. Let's assume that the world is currently producing a quantity of zero leather shoes. Firms must acquire leather, they must acquire labor, and they must acquire the machinery to cut the leather, to sew the leather into shoes. If the quantity is currently zero, then these resources can be acquired very cheaply. The cost of producing the first leather shoe is going to be very low. Let's assume the first leather shoe can be produced at a very low cost. And between zero and one million leather shoes, costs are similarly very low. Again, the reason costs are low as leather shoe production begins is because the resources needed to produce leather shoes are very abundant. And as we learned in our introductory unit, price is a reflection of relative scarcity. If resources are relatively unscarce or abundant, then the price of those resources is relatively low. What will happen, however, as the production of leather shoes increases from 1 million to 2 million, 2 million to 3 million, 3 million to 4 million, and so on? As you can see, it would not be surprising if the costs of producing additional leather shoes were to increase as the production of leather shoes increases. Let's talk about why. What happens to the resources needed to produce leather shoes as leather shoe production doubles and then triples and then doubles again from 1 million to 2 million to 4 million to 6 million and so on. Resources are becoming scarcer. Leather, which used to be gotten very cheaply because it was abundant and there was no leather shoe industry at all, is now becoming more costly. The labor needed to work in these factories, wages are rising because there's more competition for that labor. The machinery, the sewing machines, the cutting machines needed to manufacture leather shoes, there's more competition for them, there's more demand for them, therefore the costs of these machines rise and the costs of producing additional leather shoes increase. As output rises from zero to one million to three million to five million to eight million pairs of leather shoes, costs of additional leather shoes increase due to the increasing scarcity of the resources needed to produce leather shoes. As we can see here, what we end up with is what we call an increasing marginal cost curve. Marginal is another word for additional. So the marginal cost refers to the cost of additional units of a good to the producers of that good. The relationship between the quantity produced of a particular good and the marginal cost of producing that good is direct. As output increases, marginal cost increases because the resources needed to produce 
the good become increasingly scarce. Hence, their prices rise. Now, what does this have to do with the law of supply? Well, you may have noticed that the upward sloping marginal cost curve looks an awful lot like a supply curve. So if we looked at the vertical axis, not as the cost of producing leather shoes, but as the prices of leather shoes, and we put a particular price on here, we can answer the question why a firm would only be willing to provide a certain quantity of leather shoes at a particular price. Let's put the price of P1 on our graph. The question I have is, how many leather shoes would firms be willing to provide at the the maximum at a price of P1. Would producers be willing to provide, say, 6 million leather shoes? Let's have a look. At a quantity of 6 million and a price of P1, we can see that the cost of producing 6 million shoes is actually much greater than the price of P1. The marginal cost, I'll call this MC1, is much higher than the price of P1. What does this mean for the producers? What it means is that they would be earning losses on the margin. In fact, for every pair of shoes produced beyond 2 million, they would be earning losses. Because beyond 2 million shoes at a price of P1, the marginal cost is greater than the price. So how many shoes would producers be willing to produce at a price of P1? Well, obviously at P1, based on the marginal cost that firms face, they would be willing to produce up to, but not beyond, 2 million shoes. The reason is that at 2 million, the marginal cost equals the price. Firms would break even on the 2 millionth pair of shoes and earn profits on every pair of shoes before that. Because for every pair of shoes between 0 and 2 million, the marginal cost is less than the price. In other words, they would be earning profits. However, every pair of shoes beyond 2 million, the marginal cost exceeds the price and they would be earning losses. And so the rationale continues. If the price of shoes that consumers are willing to pay was P2, firms would not be willing to make any more than 5 million pairs of shoes. Because beyond 5 million pairs of shoes, the marginal cost would be greater than the price and the firms would be losing money. Keep in mind, firms are profit seekers. It is never in business's interest to produce a good if the marginal cost, in other words, the cost of the last unit produced, exceeded the price. So the relationship here between marginal cost and supply is as follows. Combining the relationship between marginal cost and supply explained here with the information shared in our previous video on supply, including the definition of supply, the law of supply, and the determinants of supply, we now have a complete picture of why the supply curve slopes upward and what can cause a shift in the supply curve.